in this video, we're going to be going through the changes that we've been making to the to the ZF1 kits, and we're going to start with the main control board. This has had a few changes, but the main one is the server alarm, uh, the buzzer up in the top right hand corner here, that will let you know uh, audibly with an audible warning whether or not your servos are being um, overstressed. The the alarm will go off um, probably for could be a, a minute or two before any damage actually starts occurring to the servo and what will happen is that the servo is drawing too much current um, and then it will eventually burn out but this just lets you know that it's starting to draw too much current. The next change um, is to do with the um, behaviour of the um, end stop switches at either end of the, the, the carriage track. Basically before um, the carriage runs backwards and forwards on this on this on this track here. If you hit the trigger, it didn't the carriage could be anywhere along this track, and it would start moving, um, and that's a problem. So we, w w what I've done is re re reprogrammed it so that the the carriage has to be sitting on the end stop for it to start its movement. And basically, that just means that if the carriage is somehow moved, sometimes the the servo the continuous rotation servo tends to creep um, if it's not perfectly tuned. Um, and it just means that if that, that carriage has crept forwards, when it lifts up, it's not gonna start hitting the underside of the shell on top of in the gun and start causing damage to the shell or to the, to the top barrel or scuffing paint or anything like that. And so when you're going through and doing your initial setup, that, that continuous rotation servo will not start spinning unless you're holding down one of the end stop switches. Um, if it wants to extend, you need to hold down the back switch. And if you want it to retract back again, you need to be holding down the front switch when you press the trigger. The next big change is what happens when you press the trigger. I basically changed it so that you have more control over the, the prop. So what you, what you get is now you press a single trigger and that brings up the scope press it again and that basically just toggles that rear scope backwards and forwards um, when everything's down if you double click it will activate the scope in the top bay and extend that out you double click again that will retract if it's when it's all extended out if you hold the trigger that will toggle the darts now so they're separate before it used to if you press double um, if you press the trigger twice, everything would extend out. Um, but now they're, they've basically been they've been changed up, and that just means that you have a bit more control over it, a bit more in, input. Um, if you extend the darts out, and everything's extended, if you double click the trigger, it brings everything back in again. Just to go back to the the previous thing we were talking about. So if that's moved forwards, and I double click, it won't do anything. Double click again. If I move it back, here it click on the switch, double click, and that works fine. Same works for the other way. If that's off that, it won't do anything. So you just need to move that forwards till it engages that switch. And off it goes. One of, one of the other changes is the tuning order. There's a, there's a couple of extra steps, and that's for tuning the mid um, point of the movement of the darts. What we'll do is I'll do another, I'll do an updated tuning video with the latest uh, revision control board, probably the last revision control board as well, um, and we'll go through that separately. Okay. But, uh, Next on the list um, were the are the dart arms. The push fit basically isn't good enough, and what what can happen is that the plastic's too soft and it just it just sort of rounds off. And you end up with a useless arm which goes in the bin. What we've done is updated design so that you actually use the factory um, supplied arm so you can get lots of torque through and there's a again there's just a 3d printed printed little sort of sheath adapter. What you need to do with the with the factory arm is get a pair of side cutters or a knife and just cut where that second hole down is. The kind of extruded part of this, the circular part here of this, this cylinder, 
that plugs through. Use a pair of pliers just to get that nice and flush and that will clip, clip in. Um, and you need it to look something like that. Um, you can just maybe drop a bit of super glue in there if you really want it to, to hold, but generally speaking, that's good enough. And then you just apply that to your servo arm. And what you have now is a really solid actuating arm for these servos. So they can put loads of torque. These are really, really nice, powerful servos. They can put loads of torque through and get that whole mechanism moving much more reliably. Next up are the dart hatch brackets. They're the part that sits on the back there and it's where you glue the, the hatch the cover for all of this. You glue it onto there. Basically what we've done with this bracket is we broke it down into two pieces. There's two eight mil screws that go through, go into the thick part of the plastic on the other side. So they allow you to adjust that hatch and fine tune the hatch so the hatch can now move up and down ever so slightly to get the alignment right. You can also pack out, you can put a, 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 sh a, sh a shim or a small packer in, in between. If the hatch is sticking up like that, it will now, you can pack it so that it comes, starts bringing it down a bit. These, these now have slots in as well. So you can actually raise or lower or twist um, the hatch. Um, and it just gives you a, more degrees of freedom to to move the hatch around and to get the, the fit nice and perfect. Finally, the last very small change is with the uh, kind of top barrel holder. I think they're the, it's called the base on the uh, in the guide. Um, the new ones have a small hole in the bottom. You put your red barrel in, and then you now use a little countersunk three mil screw, and that will that will screw in the bottom there, and then just basically act as a grub screw which will just allow you to fix that without gluing it. It means you can take it apart. Um, you can up, upgrade it if you'd like to, um, but it just, it's just an easier way of putting that together. That's it. That is all the changes. Thank you.